Okay, so we are now doing a puppet warp movement cycle, trying to shrink this head in. And this was the last one I ended on, and now I made a duplicate of it, and I'm going to puppet warp it even more. Edit puppet warp. Now realize that the more you make, the more kind of asset stages you make in each movement test, the smoother the animation will be, but also the more frames it takes. And I don't want to spend, you know, a lot of my animation just having his head pop out. That's just what are called the in-betweens between this and this to introduce the character. So that's why I'm getting pretty aggressive here towards the end. Shifting it back. Okay. So he has to kind of emerge in my thinking. So it goes like this. I need to change the order. So it's going to go kind of like this, right? And his head has to emerge slowly, but it has to kind of push through the curtain of fur. So what else do I need to create? I need to create that curtain of fur. So I'm going to go back to my base body asset. I'm going to cut out the fur into a shape and duplicate that. Maybe something like this. Hit Command J. And now I put that on top. Right. And now I'm going to take my eraser, soft edged and 100%. Start erasing away from the edges of it. Slowly. Then I can play with opacity a little bit. I can play with levels. Intensify the contrast of the fur there. So this tusk starts to kind of appear, right? In this big mound. And then maybe I want to burn down that tusk a little bit especially in the mid-tones. And desaturate it so that it comes out of shadow into light as it emerges. I can even burn its highlights a little bit. Okay, now this fur in front, it needs to open up. So I'm going to puppet warp it. Command J, edit puppet warp, and you'll see how this works. I'm going to kind of lift this curtain of fur, lock it here and here, and then kind of spread it open, making room for the head. And the fur will shift around the head as it comes out. Now, this is what's fun about animation. It's kind of trying to think about how the world works and how you can show that step by step. It's just slowing everything down visually. So for one step, it might look like this, and then the next step might look like this. And then let's erase a little bit of that fur to really show that snout popping through. And then the next step, I duplicate. And it's going to go with this head position. So I need to puppet warp the fur now to fit around that head.
to get kind of pushed around. And I want to reveal the eye. Slow reveal of this character. Up the opacity a little bit. Maybe tone down the, uh, the shadows. I'm going to erase away a little bit from it. I think I do want to keep that other eye covered. Okay, so that's number three. And then number four for the head, duplicate the fur, puppet warp it. Lock it in place in certain places. Start revealing more and more. This time the next eye gets through. And a little bit more of the back of the head. You see the highlight for the first time. And erase away the stuff that's not needed. Okay. And then my final head, I can just keep that pretty much where it is. Eh, I'll do one more, just so I have a, a full motion cycle where both are turned on for each one. So then I say Edit Puppet Warp. And just one last time, push this all the way up, all the way around, revealing the shadows around the head as well. And most of the stuff that's behind the head is just going to get Like so. And maybe with a lower opacity eraser, I'll just smooth it in a little. Actually, I like it. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so that goes with the purple head, so let me mark that purple as well. And then everything else, they go together. So now I have those assets. I'm going to put them all into a group. This is the head reveal group. <laughs> just turn the purple ones on. So I select them all by holding down shift, click on the folder icon, and then I say head reveal. Now what's great about putting that in a group is that with the body, I can shrink these. I can select both of them. So I'm going to duplicate them for now because they're assets and because I'm going to zoom in on this later. And I want to be able to use those different head positions when I'm zoomed in. But for now, for this, I want my character small. So I'm going to shrink the character to fit within my scene. Just like so. I think I want them about there. Now, I have all the head reveal in place. I've got my creature's body in place. And I've got the first panel. Now, in my frame one, I can already see that my hero mound, I need to make a little bit bigger. Maybe a little taller. just to start with, so I don't have so much work to do to get it up to this. Okay, so now I know how to start animating. 
and start building it. So I'm going to save my assets. Now I'm going to build my stage and show you how we actually start making frames out of all of these different treasure chest activities. And like I said, if you go to image size, you can see what your dimensions are. Mine are simple, 12 by 8 by 350. You do not need yours to be larger than 8 or larger than 350. Okay. Now I'm going to build a new Photoshop file that is 12 by 8 by 350. And this is going to be my stage. Come on. Did you save him? Okay. And this stage file is only for my animation frames. Because if I tried to animate with all of those different layers from my assets, it's just going to be a nightmare. So I change it to inches. My width is 12. My height is 8. My resolution is 350. I create it. And then immediately, I'm going to bring over my first panel, which is this. Now, this first panel is made up of so many layers. I am not going to bring over all those layers. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my foreground layer at the very top. Whatever your top layer that's turned on is, I'm going to hold down Option and then go to Layer Merge Visible. Remember, we've done this a lot. So if I hold down Option and click Mayor, uh, Layer Merge Visible, it will make a new layer that combines everything that's visible. Then I'm going to select all from that layer. Command A, Command C to copy it. And you can do this all through the edit as well. So you can do select all, and then edit copy. And then I move to this new file, which is my stage, and I do edit paste or Command V. And my first layer now is my first frame. Does that make sense? So now I call this my stage file. So you're going to have two Photoshop files by the end of today. Your assets and your stage. So Carl, assignment five, stage. Oh, animation stage. My animation is going to be more than just nine frames. The minimum it can be is nine frames. But I want to introduce that character with lots of other frames. And even before I get to the character's head popping out, I need to make, make this setting more interesting. So I go back to my assets and I delete this top layer. I have to first deselect and then delete so I can get rid of the layer. And then I can make little modifications to it. Just little things. like. Um, this mound in the background, I can just move it a little bit. Come on. Just move it a little bit. Because these are living things, right? This mound, I'm just going to move it a little bit. This mound, just going to move it a little bit. I'm not going to worry about their reflections. My hero mound, I'm actually going to transform a little bit and warp it. Make it look like it's breathing. It's going to kind of stretch up. So then this mound, I'm just going to move it a little bit or warp it a little bit so it feels like it's expanding and breathing. Just little shifts. And then my sky, I might even change this a little bit, change its opacity a little bit. Just the texture fill, right? Maybe even move it. Move that sky just back and forth a little. Okay, now this is my second frame. It's not one of my keyframes. It's just what's called an in-between. I go back to my foreground. I hold down Option. I say Layer Merge Visible. I say Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, go back to my stage, Command V to paste it in. And look, now I have two frames. And I've started my animation. These little guys. 